Hi and welcome in this new video, hope you're doing well, hope your day is great and stay to discover what is new in Airflow 2.9. My name is Mark Lamanti, Head of Customer Education at Astronomer, best-selling tutor on Udemy and if you want to stay up to date with Airflow, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and last but not least, smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm, that will help me a lot. Without further ado, let's discover what Airflow 2.9 has for us. It is common to have DAGs that keep failing over and over, especially on weekends. Or you might have some DAGs that keep failing because they were experiments or just tests. But the thing is, as those DAGs keep running and failing, well, you are wasting a lot of resources. And at some point, it might be cool to stop them automatically. Well, guess what? This is possible with the new max consecutive failed DAG runs parameter. This parameter defines the maximum number of consecutive failed DAG runs. Beyond this, the scheduler will disable the DAG. You can define it at the DAG level, as you can see here, three, which means after three consecutive DAG runs in failure, then the DAG will be automatically paused. Or you can define it at the airflow configuration level with the following parameter, airflow core max consecutive failed DAG runs per DAG. By default, the value is zero, which means you will have to pause your DAG manually, otherwise they will keep failing forever. Moving on to the next feature, which I'm very excited about, and I'm sure you will be too, but before I have to introduce to you the concept of data set. So a data set is a group of logical records, for example, a table in a database or a file. With the data set, instead of triggering data pipelines based on time, you can trigger them based on data updates. For example, we have the following data set and two data pipelines, and imagine that DAG A updates the following data set that triggers DAG B, because DAG B is scheduled on the updates for this specific data set. So that's the beauty of data sets, you can basically trigger DAGs based on data updates instead of time. Now, this is limited to the scope of Airflow. For example, imagine that now you still have the same data set, again a file, but you have a Spark job or a Databricks job that updates this data set. In this case, Airflow won't be aware of it and so it won't trigger DAG B. This is because Airflow doesn't really look into the content of the data sets. That might change in the future, but as of today, it's not the case. So how can you overcome this limitation? Well, guess what? In 2.9, you have a way to tell to Airflow that a data set has been updated by sending a post request to the following API endpoint with your data set as the content of this request. Now your Databricks job updates a dataset, in this case a file, and then it sends a POST request to Airflow indicating that this dataset has been updated, so it triggers DAGB. And just like that, you are able to trigger data pipelines based on data updates, even if those updates come from external tools. And that opens some other possibilities. For example, you have two Airflow deployments, deployment one and deployment two. DAG A in deployment one updates the dataset and sends the request to the deployment two indicating that this dataset has been updated, which triggers DAG B in deployment two. So you are able to create cross dependencies between multiple Airflow deployments at ease. Speaking of datasets, so far they were pretty limited. Indeed, you had two options if you wanted to trigger your DAG based on datasets. The first one is by waiting for one dataset and the second one is by waiting for multiple datasets. But if you wait for multiple datasets, like in the following example, then you have to wait for all of them to be updated. So what if you have more complex logics? For example, what if you want to trigger your DAG when the dataset A or dataset B or C or D is updated? Or what if you want to trigger your DAG when A and B or C and D are updated? So you have two groups of datasets. And if one of the groups is updated, then you want to trigger your DAG. Or what if you want to trigger the DAG when A and B and C or D are updated? So you see, you have more complex logics with the datasets and until 2.9, you had no way to do that. Well, now you can with the dataset conditional logic and more specifically with the new two operators or an end that you can use with your datasets. Let me show you an example. So here you want to trigger your DAG when the dataset A or B or C or D is updated. And to do that, you use the schedule parameter, you define your datasets between parentheses and you use the pipe operator. That's it. And keep in mind that you have to use the parentheses, not like before with the square brackets. So each time you use one of the operators and or a pipe, you have to use the parentheses and not the square brackets, otherwise it won't work. Let me show you another example. This time you want to trigger your DAG when the datasets 
A and B or C and D are dated. Again, you use the parentheses, you create two groups for data sets A and B and then C and D. And you can use the end operator as well as the pipe operator to indicate that if one of the groups is updated, then it's fine, you can trigger the DAG. Last example, if you want to trigger the DAG when A and B and C or D are updated, you can do that. So you see, this is very powerful because it opens so much more possibilities than before with the new conditional operators with datasets. Another use case that you might have is this one. Imagine that you want to trigger your DAG based on both time-based schedules and dataset events. How can you trigger your DAG based on a current expression or a dataset? Well, in 2.9, you can do it. How? By using the dataset or time schedule timetable. In the following example, you use the dataset or time schedule in the schedule parameter, and this timetable expects two parameters. The first one is the timetable, and here we define the cron expression using the cron trigger timetable, and then datasets where you define the datasets that this DAG is waiting for. So here we are saying that this DAG will run either based on the cron expression or as soon as the dataset a3 my bucket file is updated. But just before we saw that you have new operators to create complex logics using datasets. So can you do that with the dataset or time schedule timetable? Yes, you can. As you can see here, now not only we are waiting for the dataset file one, but we are also waiting for the dataset file two. And again, as we use a conditional operator, we have to use the parentheses instead of the square brackets like before. So you see how powerful this can be. Now you are able to trigger your DAGs both based on time or events. Okay, now you've discovered the new features for datasets. Let me show you two new additional features in 2.9 that I'm pretty sure you will love just before showing you the amazing updates for the user interface. So first, remember that in Airflow, you have a couple of callbacks that you can use whenever something happens to a task. For example, on execute callback, which is called right before the task begins. Then you have on failure callback, which is called when the task fails. Then on retry callback, when the task is up for retry. And finally, if a task succeeds, Airflow calls the on success callback. But there was one callback missing here, which is the on skipped callback. Indeed, what if you want to call a function when a task is skipped? Well, now you can do it in Airflow 2.9 with the new on skipped callback. And to use it, put it in the task definition and then put the function that you want to call with this callback. It is as simple as that. Last but not least, you have a new decorator, which is the bash decorator. And if you don't know what a decorator is, take a look at the task API in Airflow. It's basically a new way of writing DAGs, which is much easier to read and faster to write. And that's what you can see here. So with the new bash decorator, you're able to execute a bash command without using the bash operator explicitly. And as you can see, it's much easier again to read and to write. To use it, you just create a new task, here run a script, then you put the decorator at the top, add task.bash, and you return the bash command that you want to run or the bash script that you want to run. Here we execute a bash script. One thing to notice here, it is the space at the end. You have to put it if you want to run a bash script using the bash operator or the bash decorator. All right, now it is time to discover the new user interface updates. And as you will see, they are pretty amazing. Let's take a look. On the Airflow UI, the DAG view hasn't changed that much, but if you click on a DAG, you can see that the top bar is gone. Remember that before 2.9, you had this top bar with grid, graph, and count and code. And that was pretty annoying because you had almost the exact same views in the grid view, as you can see here, graph, graph, then Gantt, Gantt, code and code and so on. Well, now it is gone. And when you click on a DAG, you land on the grid view, which is not even the grid view anymore, as it is the default view. Speaking of the default, by default, you get the details of your DAG. And this one is very interesting because if you scroll down a little bit, you can see the dataset conditions. So if your DAG is using datasets to be triggered, then you can take a look at the conditions that trigger this data pipeline. So here, we know that this data pipeline runs as soon as the following dataset is updated. If you take a look at another DAG, so let's say conditional datasets, which is using conditional datasets, you can see here that the dataset conditions are different. Here we are saying that if a dataset A or B is updated and as you can see with all 
a data set C or D is updated, then this DAG will run. And something new and useful in 2.9 is under DAG details, you have the dataset conditions. So if your DAG is triggered by a dataset or multiple datasets, you can see the corresponding conditions. For example, here, you know that this data pipeline will be triggered as soon as the following dataset is updated. You can have more complex conditions. For example, if we take a look at another DAG, like this one, you see, here we are saying that this data pipeline will run as soon as one of the datasets in the first group and one of the datasets in the second group are updated. In addition, now you can see the datasets directly in the graph view. As you can see here, we have the different datasets A, B, C, and D. And something else that I truly love in 2.9 is that if you go back to DAX view and then click under next run dataset updated, you access a new model where you can see the conditions again, but more importantly, you can see the different datasets along with their latest update since last DAG run, and you can exactly see which one is missing to trigger your data pipeline. Actually, let me show you that in practice, as now we are able to manually create dataset events. So let's close this model and turn on the toggle here, and then go to datasets, and you see we have the different data sets again, A, D, C, and B. We can click on one of them, let's say A. And here you have a new button, manually create data set event, click on it. And here if you want to add some extra information for this data set, you can. But for now, let's click on create. Okay, perfect. So we have created a new data set event for data set A. Let's go back to DAX. Click on the model again. Now we know that dataset A was updated on this date and we are still waiting for datasets B, C, and D to trigger the DAG. Another major update in the Airflow UI is the new task duration view. So let me show you that. If you go on one of the DAGs, so let's say this one, and go to run duration, this is the new task duration view. So before you had the landing times view, this one is gone. Now you only have run duration and you can even show the landing times if you want. So here you have the duration for every DAG run as well as the details. But if you want to know more about the task instances, then you just need to click on one of them. So let's say this one. And again, task duration. And more importantly, you have the median total duration as well as the median queued duration for every task instance, which is very useful to spot any bottlenecks or to better optimize your task. Some other helpful updates in the Airflow UI. The first one is if you go back to the graph and click on the DAG run, you have the button clear. And here you have a new option, which is clear only failed tasks. So pretty useful if you want to clear only the failed tasks for a specific DAG run. And also, if you carefully take a look at the logs of a task by going to logs, you can see the new feature log grouping. So if you expand this group, you can access additional logs. But this is just another way to better organize your logs so it's easier for you to read them. And you can create log groups yourself just by using this special notation, as you can see here with group and end group in your tasks. So again, very useful to make your logs easier to read for everybody. That's it about Airflow 2.9. I hope you are pretty excited about it. And if you want to stay up to date with Airflow, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I see you for another video.